Welcome to Freedom Motivated with Christina Whiteley, the podcast that empowers you to live life on your terms. Are you uninspired, bored, and unhappy with where life has taken you and yearning for a life filled with purpose and passion? Look no further. We are here to ignite that fire within, to awaken your true potential, and to guide you on a journey towards absolute freedom. Join us as we delve into the minds of incredible entrepreneurs and freedom leaders from very different backgrounds with incredible stories. Be inspired by their resilience and learn from their challenges they faced along the path to success. These are the brave individuals who fight every day to awaken people to the power of self-responsibility and who inspire them to create a life they are absolutely in love with. Each episode will explore the concept of conscious income creation, building a business or creating a career that aligns with your unique skill set, purpose, values, and belief system. Discover the strategies, tips, and invaluable insights shared by our guests as they guide you towards making a living doing what you love. It's time to break free from the shackles of conformity and embrace the freedom that awaits. Are you ready to take control of your life? Are you ready to step into the life you've always dreamed of? Then welcome to Freedom Motivated, the podcast that will ignite your spirit and unleash your potential. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Freedom Motivated. My name is Christina Whiteley, and I'm so excited to have this next guest, Miss Tracy Peterson. You guys, if you don't know her, you will by the end of this podcast. And I am so grateful that God placed me in front of her with another amazing group of women. But when I met Tracy uh, a few months back, I, I walked into a company where uh, she is an incredible leader, an incredible trainer. And you know, this woman, she is a CEO of her own company. Uh, Elevate Wellness and Aesthetics. She has an incredible project called Women Lessons, which we will talk about today. And I think that every mom who has a daughter needs to hear about this program that she has. Uh, She's an international speaker and entrepreneur. Like she is totally my soul sister. But when I walked in to this company and I heard her speak for the first time, I'm like, oh man, she's my people. Like I need to get to know her. I need to be around her. And, And it's not uh, it, it's not common that you meet people that instantly say things that are inside your head already, you know, and I felt that bond with her immediately. And over the last six months, I've gotten to know her. I cannot wait to spend some time with her on a Mediterranean cruise. We're going on in a couple of weeks in a couple of weeks. Oh my gosh. Uh, but today I want it's like Tracy. Two weeks. Sorry. Yeah, in two weeks. Um, I, I want Tracy to share her story with you. And I and I want her to talk a little bit about who she is and where she came from. And uh and and I'm gonna like pass the floor to you right now. And we're just gonna see how this conversation evolves. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm just first of all, I'm so happy. I'm just so happy to be in your circle and in your world now. I mean, we really truly are soul sisters and And I love it when you just hit it off with somebody like right at the very, very first time that you meet them. And I just think we have a lot of of our past in common and a lot of our future endeavors and goals in common. And it's just so neat to come together as women and have that sort of synergy and camaraderie. So I just love you. I love the work you're doing. And um, yeah, I'm really, really excited to be here. So I'll give you just a little bit about my background. So I... um, I'm a working mom. I've always been a working mom. I've got three little uh, kiddos and I say little, they're getting bigger by the day and I don't (laughs) like it. I mean, I really do like it, but they grow overnight. I'm not even kidding you, but my kids are, I have an 11 year old daughter, a nine year old son and a six year old little girl. And they are maniacs. They are, (laughs) they are like, high energy and I have no one to blame but myself (laughs) I'm like why are you guys this way I'm like oh that's right they're little mirrors of me (laughs) you know and I am I'm just I'm run by by a motor and I just always have been ever since I was young I've always been super ambitious as a child so what's interesting is God gave me all of these leadership opportunities even when I was just super super young even as young as third grade, I remember my principal at the time, I grew up in Utah, but I lived in Texas at the time. And my principal wanted me to lead these like superintendent tours for our school district. And I remember her, I was a little nervous and she was like, you know what? It's okay to be nervous. She goes, I'm going to give you a little tip. If you use, just get this, take this bookmark 
and write your bullet points of the things that you wanna make sure that you talk about. And you can just hold your bookmark here as you're walking and leading. And I remember on, and I feel like God gave me some of these natural leadership abilities, but then he also put people in my life that could help hone those natural abilities. And so I had this, this proclivity for, for leadership at a, at a very young age. And, and then, you know, subsequently through my life, you know, I, I, I remember winning student body president when I was in ninth grade. And this is where the story takes a turn because I remember in ninth grade, uh, I won student body president and I was so excited. And I walked down the hallway feeling like I was on top of the world. And I came around a corner and I saw a group of girls standing together, some of my very best friends. And I walked up behind them and they didn't know that I was there. And I heard them say like, Ugh, who does Tracy think she is? She, she's not even that great anyway. I didn't even vote for her. Ugh, she thinks she's such a big deal, blah, 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 which just crushed me, right? So I go home and I'm talking to my mom and I'm like, mom, like why don't these girls like me? And my mom, with the best intentions, probably trying to protect me, she said, well, our family's been talking and we think that you're a little too confident. You're a little too confident. And there's the being confident and being cocky. And we think you're being cocky. And so that it makes people feel uncomfortable. So I had been celebrated for these natural leadership abilities till I no longer. Right? Then I thought it was my responsibility to make people around me comfortable. So I needed to turn down those nerves, turn down that light in order to make people around me feel comfortable. And I still, at that point, continue to achieve and achieve and achieve, but it was for a different reason. It was like, I would achieve to the point where I didn't think I was being too much for people. Right. And so I kind of grew up in that. And I, I went to nursing school, like got my master's degree, all, all of these, all of these things. Like I, I got married and, you know, subsequently got a, a divorce after that, which, you know, just is a whole other, a whole other slew of slew of things. And then Everything again changed for me when I was about 35 and I stepped into entrepreneurship because I realized being a nurse practitioner, being in the medical space, it wasn't where I was passionate. I knew that I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to serve people. I wanted to help people live their greatest health, but I knew that I had chosen the wrong avenue to do that. And so when I stepped into entrepreneurship, that's when I gave myself permission again to stop caring what people thought. And I learned that it's not my job and my responsibility to make other people around me feel comfortable. That's their responsibility. Mm -hmm. And my responsibility is to develop my gifts, share my gifts, shine my light as big and as brightly as I can. And people who don't understand that they're not my people. And so that that's really where I find myself, you know, today we've got like three different successful, successful businesses. And I'll share with you a little bit more about our mother daughter movement um, that, that I had that sort of came about in the last two years. Um, but that's really where, where we are today. So I mentor people um, in business. Uh, I still have my wellness and aesthetics practice. Uh, and then we just started this mother daughter movement just, just two years ago. So that's kind of my, my backstory. I can so relate and I hope I hope our listeners can relate as well. Like I so relate to your story because I was always too much. I was always too loud, right? And and what I learned in the process is that the reason that people let's say like through shade, okay, was because your light shone so brightly. That's why. And I I, I remember uh, it was many years back, a friend of mine, I, you know, I was struggling with some of this stuff. And like, I, I you know, I said, I, I think that I turn people off because of who I am. Um, and, and that's how I was made to feel as a little kid. Right. And, and he recommended that I read the big leap. And when I read the big leap, I was like, oh my God, that's me. That's me. I, I understand now and I get it. And all of a sudden that 
guilt or shame of being too much dissipated. And I was like, I meant to step into this. And I'm so happy that you had that realization. Can I ask like what your, uh, what your ethnic background is? We're Italian. So it's very much like be seen and not heard and like, don't share anything on about anything, you know, about our lives or anything. Right. That's really interesting. I mean, I'm like Northern European. So, I mean, like German, English, like probably a little bit of Swedish in there, but mainly German and English. So it's not really necessarily, um, not necessarily a, a cultural, uh, cultural, however, probably is cultural. Cause I grew up in a, in, just in a very conservative, just a conservative Christian community. And I'm still a part of that conservative Christian community. And so I think it was more of stay humble right? It's like, of course, of be course, humble, be humble. And it's like, be beware of pride, right? And so, which are all good things. But I don't think I do think that you can still be humble, and beware of pride, and still honor your gifts that God gave you. And I think that's, that's the lesson is, is I thought something was wrong with me. Yeah. And it's very confusing because I've been celebrated for it up until the point where it made someone uncomfortable. And we've talked about this before that I feel like mothers, we're so well intentioned, but we inadvertently project our insecurities onto our daughters. So if we're not careful, we're going to continue to repeat those patterns and our daughters are going to be doomed to repeat the patterns of our past and our mom's past and our grandmother's past because nobody just stopped and said, hold up, I'm going to work on myself <laughs> and I'm going to break some of these, these patterns and some of these projections so that my daughter can live like her own life, right? So we're not projecting some of those, some of those generational generational traumas to that next generation. And, and that is the hard work, by the way, you know, yeah. we have to, we have to decide that it stops here or else it continues as a cycle, as a cycle. Right. And so we have to decide that it stops here. And, you know, that, that lesson to stop caring what people think in a society where everyone is looking for validation is such a hard lesson. It's such a hard lesson for our kiddos. Um, and, and one of the things that I instill in my daughter all the time is become undefendable, right? Can you become absolutely unoffendable? And that, you know, there is so much truth to what you're saying about, uh, being humble, right? And, and and that and still having that sense of pride, but being humble. And I really believe it's how we teach those lessons that matter. It's the language in which we use. And so I would love for you to talk about uh, your, your program for mothers and daughters, uh, women lessons, which I think is so important that we pass down the career correct lessons uh, so yes. that we empower our yeah. daughters as opposed to leave them with trauma. So would love to hear uh, more about that program that you've created and, and, you know, what came behind that? For sure. Well, this is, this is what I love. So right around that, that point in time, when I started on the entrepreneurial journey, that's when you have to get self-reflective, right? Because you can, we, we have a saying that you, you can only earn as much as your personal development allows you to. Right. Mm -hmm, and so I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I'm going to shoot for the moon. So I need to start working, working on myself. You can't just rely on your skill sets or your charm or your, you know, our uh, ability to speak articulately in front of people at some point, you have to continue to personally develop in order for your income to continue to increase because your value that you're adding to other people has to increase too. And that only follows suit with your personal development. And so I remember this was about two years ago, my youngest or my oldest daughter, Quinn, she was nine at the time. She came to me and it was just typical after school activities. You know, the TV was on in the background and she was sitting at our, at our bar and I was doing dishes and I remember, I don't know if you do this, but like when you're putting stuff away on like plate, cup, <laughs> you know, like I just say it in my mind, I don't know. And I'm like fork. And there's always like that one fork that gets stuck in the bottom of the dishwasher. And you're like, how in the world did that fork, you know, get down there. And so I remember standing up holding this fork 
right when my sweet nine-year-old says, hey, mom, can we do woman lessons? And I was like, yes, we can do woman lessons. Like, what does that mean to you? I, I, we can do it. I'm a woman. I'm standing here. I think I could probably figure it out. But what does that mean to you? And she so thoughtfully, Christina said, hmm. well, I need to learn how to put together an outfit. I want to learn how to do my makeup and I want to learn how to cook. And I was like, that is oh. the sweetest thing. And yes, I can teach you all of that. And then in my head, in my high performing entrepreneurial, like nurse practitioner, mom brain, I just went down this spiral of, that is so sad. Is that all that she thinks that it means to be a woman is what we look like and what we do. And I was like, standing there with that fork in my hand. And I was like, this is a fork in the road for me. And I call these Christina one minute moments. We have these one minute moments with our girls and with all of our children, but these one minute moments with our daughters where we can just say, oh, teach you women lessons. Like, no, I'll teach you. Yeah, right? Or we can get a little introspective and say, this is a teaching moment. This is a one minute moment. What do I want her to know about being a confident, but not confident in the way that the world says that you're confident, but a truly confident woman, one who doesn't self-criticize, one who's self-assured, who knows exactly who she is and, and, and who God has called her to be. It's like how, what lessons did I have to learn? Did I have to go through for me to be at this point now as a confident woman that I want to make sure that I pass on to her? And so I started thinking about those. And so I created seven woman lessons to help high performing women and their daughters between the ages of nine and 12 to overcome self-criticism by looking inward and upward for their validation instead of looking to the world. And so those seven woman lessons are remember who you are and whose you are. Gratitude grounds, own your divine gifts, be self more, not self less. You are more than your body, community counts, and live in your potential. So, and it's been amazing. Like we do retreats twice a year. And the community is just, I'm literally, Christina, like I'm seeing a generation change right before my eyes. And it's it's not a program that I created. Like it was a program that I was given by God. I really truly feel that because I believe that we are uniquely positioned to help the person we used to be. Absolutely. And I needed these things. I needed to learn these things. And so I want to teach her these things so she can go and learn her own, her own lessons, right? But if I can help her or any woman out there to avoid some of the same pitfalls, the same, the same hardships that I have, I feel like I can save these young girls 20 years of struggling, 20 years of body image issues, 20 years of girl challenges, 20 years of disordered eating patterns, 20 years, like I can save them from it. And, you know, that's what we're doing. Oh my God, sign me up. Izzy's eight, but like as soon as she's nine, sign me up. I'm totally there. Honestly, you're talking about it. I've got goosebumps. I still have goosebumps, by the way. Um, because, and and you know, you talk about the this one minute moment. Last night we were on the way home uh, from a doctor's appointment with my son. We're just pulling into the parking lot and, and Izzy goes, mom, when, at what age does puberty start? And I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I look at my husband and he looks at me and I was like, well, you know, uh, it actually starts for different ages. And like, we started having this conversation and she, and then she goes, does it hurt? And I was like, oh dear, my sweet girl, you know, I'm like, I'm like, there's, this is such a can of worms that I am going to open up with you, but like what other, no, it doesn't hurt. But like, what are the other questions that you have, you know? And you just realize there's all of this going in up here, going on up here. And, and finally they have the courage to ask. Finally, they have the courage. And like, this is opening up that one minute moment that you're like, okay, what I say matters so much right now. And so the fact that you put together a program and I love that you are more than your body is part of that, because I think that is so important, um, especially today in today's society and, and, you know, how 
young girls show up in society. I'm like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? Um, so I, I am so appreciative that there are people out you out there like you that had downloads like this, that had, you know, these, these things come into your life where you're like, this is my mission. Right. And I feel so strongly about this too, Tracy, you know, uh, being a role model for my daughter, I do not take lightly. It is something that, uh, you know, I, and, and I do make mistakes. There are times that I do have to apologize. And I said, you know, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have behaved that way and honoring, Hey, you know what? At some point in time, our kids realize that we are not on this pedestal up here, that we're only human at some point in time. And I always wanted her to know that from the get go, that we're all getting better all the time. And that that is a constant evolution of, of a lifetime. Right. Oh yes. Yes. And, and, and the thing is about that too, like give your, give yourself some grace too, in that moment, because the fact that she came to you and asked you that question, that means you're doing everything right. Right. Oh. <laughs> And give yourself grace in that moment too, that you're not going to say the wrong, you're not going to say the wrong thing. The fact that you're just having a conversation and are having open dialogue about something that maybe she has a little bit of fear about, there's a little bit of unknown. That is so good. And you're doing, you're doing such a good job. Like you seriously are doing such, such a good job. And it just opening up that dialogue. That's all that I ever wanted um, to do with my children is just, and that's something that my mother did give me. And I want to, I want to honor that because I, I never want to operate in this movement isn't operating from a space of like mother wounds and trauma and like kind of more of the um, pessimistic view of it. I take a very optimistic view and approach. Has there been many traumas? Yes. It, it, our mother daughter relationships tumultuous. Yes. But also, I feel like our generation, for whatever reason, we've been tasked, whether it's the, the free flow of information, whether it's just the type of humans that we are, whether it's the time in society that we're living, I feel like we've been tasked with overcoming and stopping those generational patterns. I think it's just this calling on our generation. I because agree. I believe now this is where this is where the conversation gets real. And this is not where it's like, this is just the gospel according to me. I believe that we were called to be mothers right now at this time, at this time and season in the world, because I believe that we were called to raise the generation that will usher in the coming of our savior. I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like that's maybe why this generation has been tasked with stopping those generational curses some of those generational patterns it, it's for them because we're just going to do better we're going to take ownership over our lives we're going to invest in personal development so that we can be the best version of ourselves because i believe that the greatest gift that we can give our children is the gift of a mother who believes in herself and goes after her dreams because in doing that we're giving permission for them to do the same that is such a powerful lesson. And, and, you know, some of the things that you're talking about, and, and I'd like to kind of go farther into this topic is, you know, we can sit there and, and compare childhoods. We can, can sit there and compare our experiences, but really what it's about is healing through that process and realizing, okay, so I have a choice right now. And this is, you know, this is what generational trauma does is that it just like duplicates and replicates until you have this awareness. And I, I believe the same thing as you is that, you know, there, there, and there were so many years that my husband and I put off having kids. We're like, can we afford them? You know, or do we want to bring them into this crazy world? Is that responsible? Are we going to miss out on things in our life because we have kids? And then we, through these deep conversations, we're like, we are the people that should be raising children right now. We need to raise and like, not in a negative way, but we need to raise warriors. We need to raise these little kids with personal identity and, and, and a purpose and something that they don't feel scared speaking the truth and going out there and making a difference in this world. And, and that job lands on us. And so how conscious we are of having those conversations and maybe just having an observation of what life was before 
and how we want to change it differently, having an awareness. I believe the same thing is that our generation is here to shake things up and raise the next generation of what is going to happen in this world and, and how we evolve what is currently happening to a better case scenario for everybody. Yes. Like our whole, our whole mission and part of my purpose is to teach people to learn to love themselves, learn to lean on God so they can confidently raise the next generation of leaders. But you can only confidently lead and confidently raise if you first do the work. Like our kids, you have to be it first, right? They yes. have to see it to be it. So if we want our kids to be bold, if we want our kids to know their identity, then we have to be that for them first. We have to be that for them first. And I love that you bring up identity because it's all about identity. And our identity is under attack left and right. And this is, this is a God moment that I don't normally share. I don't normally share this. this but when I have... Um, we went back and forth a lot and I tossed and turned with like, what age? Maybe it's just all girls. And I was like, no, it can't be all girls. It's too broad of a range. And, and somebody asked me, well, what, what age range do you want, you know, to focus on? And I said, well, I, and it just kind of came to me. I was like, well, I, I want it to be between the ages of nine and 12. And then as I went back and I kind of just stayed in that, in that lane, as I went back and I started researching, I noticed that their age of psychosocial development happens between the ages of nine and 15. So a little bit older, but nine and 12, they're vacillating between their identity and confusion. That's their psychosocial state of development is right between that age nine to 12, between who am I? How do I see myself? How do I identify myself? Am I a jock? Am I artistic? Am I this? Am I that? Right. And so it's just, I call it like this ooey gooey stage where they're like not yet teenagers. So they think you, you know, they're not going to listen to you and their friends mean more to them than anything else. Right. But they're old enough to understand <clears throat> the, the difference between right and wrong, between truth and lies. And it's this sweet spot where they are these little ooey gooey sponges and they want to have a relationship with their mom. They want to do fun things with them. And it's it's magical. It truly, truly is magical. And then the big vision for this is I want to create a multi-generational mother-daughter movement. So we're going to start with a cohort of nine to 12 because that's where my daughter's at. And I'm, I'm building this. It's sort of by my daughter for my daughter because she inspired the whole thing. I love it. When she gets to 13, then we'll do a cohort of 13 to 15. It's like, what issues are they dealing with? What are we in the middle of that? I want to create this container where moms have more resources because I believe that my mom was doing the best she could with the resources that she had at the time. So I want to increase resources because to develop confidence at each stage of our womanhood right? Not just motherhood, but womanhood. What happens when my oldest daughter, Quinn, goes to high school? How am I going to support her best? What about when she goes to college or when she starts a family? How do I not overstep my bounds? How do I become an empty nester, right? So I want to create this whole movement where we can come together once a year, twice a year. We'll do breakout sessions and bring in experts in all of these areas to provide women resources and how to remain truly confident in a world that gives us lies about what it means to really, truly be a woman. That is so beautiful. Your mission is so beautiful and it is the best case scenario. So I have to play devil's advocate here and, and say, you know, um, what about those moms that are going through those years and they want to pull their hair out? Like, I know that my mom probably would have put me in boarding school if she could have when I was 13, because I was such a nightmare because of hormones and questioning and being bullied at school, but being too shameful to have a conversation about it. Right. And not being able to express myself in a way that I felt safe. Right. So I mean, for all of those moms out there that are just like, this is the worst, right? Because they're butting heads, they're butting heads. How can you uh, um, give them some hope or uh, or share a little bit of how you can bring joy back into being a mom of a daughter at that age? Mm. Now, are you, let me clarify that. Let me clarify the question. Are you talking over the age of 12, like into the... <laughs> 
It is different, isn't it? Well, I think what you're talking about, right, is like getting them in that sweet spot right before they hit that age, right? And so you have, you're building the relationship before you get into the the nitty gritty of when it's going to get hard, right? So, um, you know, what would you say if, if and, and maybe maybe that is an age range, but more of the, of the times when people find it the, the most challenging to be a parent when there is that pushback and that disconnect and that butting of heads, you know, how, how do they find the joy in this like amazing journey is be, of being a parent, yeah. <laughs> right? When yeah. they're having, when they're really struggling and they're just like, oh my God, I just want this to end, <laughs> you know? I mean, listen, just know you're not alone. Hold yeah. on for life, right? It's like we talked about, it, it, Christine and I had a conversation a little bit earlier. It's like, the gift is in the hard. Mm -hmm. The gift is in the hard because I believe that obstacles and hardships are what keep us humble. I think those obstacles and hardships are what make us fall to our knees and ask for help because the truth of the matter is, is you can't do it alone. I, I truly don't know how somebody could feel confident trying to raise a child at this day and age without like the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost, literally like yeah, the Holy yeah. Spirit to help you discern between right and wrong and to be between truth and lies. Like there's just so much in it. And so honestly, I would say if you're in the middle of just the grind, I would say two things. Cause I'm, I'm there in a season right now, even with my son, he's nine where if I can just pray to God to help me to see him the way that he sees my son, right? Like help me yeah. to see this child as you see them. I know they're in a season, right? And we, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, seasons come and seasons go. And I think the greatest thing that we can do for our children as mothers is to just continue to love them just yeah. them. wholeheartedly, unconditionally, unconditionally love them. And I was talking to somebody the other day that I think if we can tell our children at a young age, ad nauseum, that there is nothing that you could do or nothing that you could say that could ever make me love you less. There are things that you can do that I don't, that I don't like, but I will always love you. Yes. I will always love you. So if they feel that overwhelming sense of, of love and there's unconditional love that there is nothing, no decision they could make. They could say, shut up. I hate you. You're the worst mom in the world. Like, you know, I wish you were dead. Like all the things that like, let's be real. Like we hear those things as parents or, and if you haven't, you will. They just know, like, I love you. There's nothing yep. you can do that would make me love you less and just give, it's like God, the prayer would be God, give me eyes to see her the way that you see her. Absolutely. That is such a beautiful, a, a beautiful sentiment. And, and something that I, I am so grateful to share with this audience is, you know, in, in those moments of frustration and weakness, um, you know, I love you. I, I I'm sorry, you're upset. I love you so much and nothing will be able to change that. And, and you know what, I also appreciate your transparency. We are in the middle of spiritual warfare right now. We have lost our values. We've lost our, our ties to God. We've lost our ties to family in Canada and the US. Uh, and, and you know, it's happening globally, but part of the reason that we moved to Mexico is because 99.9% .9 of the people here are Catholic and they still practice that. They still honor that. They still honor the family unit and take care of each other. And those were the values that we wanted to raise our kids with. And we moved countries to honor those values. And, and people might think that that is extreme, but I also understand how delicate our child's minds are and how those first few years of life and how they're raised determine the outcome of who they become, yes. you know? And so when, when we talk about this, this, um, this place of, finding joy in the difficult things. We talk about this in business too, right? Like in the challenge, we find the joy because we know that it's growth. And so to be able to refocus that in parenting and, and have a parallel there is so important. Um, 
but one of the things that I, I know that you're a huge advocate of is, is learning from our kids and, and being the student as opposed to being, you know, because if you're raised in the culture where like you do it this way or, or no way, right? Like, or like it has to be this way, which is how I was raised. Um, it, it creates this fear and this lack of trust, right? And so um, can you speak a little, I know that we're limited on time, but can you speak just a little bit about uh, how you've been able to um, create an environment where your children are your teachers? We might've lost you. Darn it, come back. Where are we going here? What is happening in this world? There you are. There you are. Uh, Lord, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. The audio will be great. <laughs> right? We were on a, we were on a roll. We were on a roll. So I didn't hear anything you just said. Just okay. Uh, start, starting from where? Um, from, you said, uh, in, Can the, uh, in Canada and the U S that's why we moved down here because this okay. is our family values and it might seem extreme to some people. Okay. Um, so we were so committed to raising our kids in this environment because we realized, uh, the importance of their young minds and how moldable they are. And that, that in those first few years, that determines the outcome of who they become in their adulthood. Right. And our job is simply to, uh, help them become independent of us and make good choices. Right. And care about other people and and do good in the world. Um, but one of the things that I know that you speak to is how, you know, in business, we look at challenges as something that we can grow through. But I know something that you really honor is, is helping uh, other women kind of see these challenges in motherhood uh, become lessons for us and, and letting our children teach us. So how, like in a, in a world where we've been raised as, the boss and like, you do what I do and you sit, you know, and, and, or do as I say, not as I do, or like, this is the rule and this is how it has to be, or do it because I said so. How do we, how do we shift that mindset into a place where we, we allow growth on both sides? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. And what comes to my mind is looking at our children. I think, <laughs> I feel like our children come to us not so that we can make them more like us, but so that they can make us more like them. Mm -hmm. And that's the gift. That's the gift of parenthood. Because if you think back, and I remember a time, it was in 1989, I was seven years old. And I remember like listening to my Walkman, like with a cassette tape, you know, New Kids on the Block was like playing on that. <laughs> and I remember my friend Stephanie yelling through our screen door, like, Tracy, do you want to come, you know, like pull out the slip and slide? We're going to do a slip and slide. And I was like, yes. Oh my gosh, let's go. So I put on like my color block swimming suit and I step into my little pink jelly sandals and I grab like a red ripe strawberry off the counter and it's just dripping juice down my face and I fly out the door. I'm like, mom, I'll see you later, you know? And I run across the little cul-de-sac, throw my towel without a care. And I remember pulling out that yellow slip and slide and just running and playing and jumping and pushing each other. And like children are in such a pure, unconditioned secure place of who yeah. of who they really are like they are just I feel like they're closer to God than we as adults are right they're yeah, sort of absolutely untainted. they're untainted from the world and I remember doing all of that and when I think back to that time when I was running down that yellow slip and slide I never once thought to myself I wonder what I look like in this swimming suit I wonder who's going to be there I don't know if I should run down the slip and slide because my thighs are going to be jiggling, right? It's like, I was just showing up, being present, like living in my gifts, like the divine gifts that God gave me. And it's not just, oh, they, well, they don't have a care. They don't have a care in the world. And it's like, well, really they care about what matters most. And what matters most is our presence, 
Like, where are we living in our heads? Are we living in the present moment with the person that we're talking to, looking in their eyes? Or are we living in our past, living in our past mistakes, our past decisions, our past lives, our past selves? What did somebody else do to us, right? Sort of that state of victimhood. Or are we living in our head in the future, worried about the future, having anxieties and stresses over what's to come? It's like, we literally don't have control over that. And just like you said, the only thing that we can control is what we can control, which is our attitude and our actions. And so making sure that when we're in the present moment, children are so present in that present moment. And those kids will call you out if they know that you're not present. If you're oh, yeah. there with your body, but you're not there with your presence. My son did it to me last night. Mom, can you look at me? Mom. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> No, mom, I need you to look at me as my head is like down in my phone typing. I'm like, yeah, but mom. And he did, he, oh my goodness, Christina, he probably said it four times. Mom, can you look at me? And so I think we learn, we can learn to like live in the present moment to get out of our heads, to not, to, to be less insecure, less self-critical all of those things we can teach or we can learn from our children. You know, it's so interesting that you're talking about this because on that drive home last night, Izzy said, you know, I wish that you guys just didn't have phones. Like she doesn't understand that we work on our phones and that, you know, we could be at a job away from her all the time. And so like, there's still that disconnect and it gets frustrating to her. And I said, you do. And she's like, yeah, it's so much more fun when you're not on your phone. And as you're speaking right now, I'm like, you know what? She comes home from school. She wants downtime, which I understand after school and she hops on her iPad. But what if downtime was like, Hey, no phones right now. We're going to go for a walk or we're going to go to the pool or we're going to just spend some quality time together, how would that change our relationship? So you just like gave me that minute, that one minute moment right now. Thank you so much for that. Well, I, I'm telling you, I mean, I had, listen, there's different seasons in, in parenthood. And I feel like at different times, God puts little stirrings in your heart for a reason. Mine right now is about technology. It's yeah. about I just recently had um, a child psychotherapist who now coaches parents on my podcast. Um, my podcast is called Woman Lessons, How to Be and Raise a Truly Confident Woman. And she said that we are stunting our children's emotional, social, psychological, and mental capacities and abilities to cope because they've been in front of screens. Yep. And there's a reason why this generation is an anxious generation. And she said, we've been lied to. We were told if we introduce this at an early age, they will learn to adopt these technologies, which they're going to have ever present in front of them for the rest of their lives. She said, there is no scientific evidence to support any of those claims. And she said, but we bought it. Hook, line, and sinker as parents. Like, oh, I'm going to give this educational game, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. She said, no screens policy. I said, is there any good screen time? She said, the only good screen time is when you're sitting as a family watching like a movie Oof. that you're watching with them, not sitting next to them on your phone. On your phone. Because again, Guilty. They, they know their presence, whether or not you're you're really truly present. And that's the stirring right now in, in my heart. And I'm, I'm almost Christina, true story. Well, I am. I'm not going to call it Mean Moms Club. But I, I, I had a funny idea to start a Mean Moms Club because there's so much pressure between parents, like get your daughter a phone and do this. And I'm just like, no, no. And I tell my Not daughter, I, I tell her the why behind it. My goodness, Christina, full disclosure, we've had exposure to pornography with our kids already oh at nine God. years old from a free, from a free game that was on the phone. And it's just like, we talk about don't do drugs, don't drink alcohol until you're 21. How in the world do we feel good about giving our little kids an addiction in their pocket? I know. I when know. I, you're right. When I myself at 42 years old, I don't have full control over it. Yeah. So until I can get full control over this. And the control it has over me and set proper boundaries around it. 
right? And get my dopamine hits in other ways, like serving people, connecting with people, grounding, getting outside in nature, all of those things. If I can't develop those things, and I tell my daughter that, I'm honest. I'm like, Absolutely. I knowingly cannot give this to you when I haven't even found that that happy that happy control and those happy and healthy boundaries for myself. And so yeah, I'm going to yeah. start a, a mean mom's club. I'll be part of it. Don't worry. I'm <laughs> in. We, we band together, but seriously, I'm going to call it. So I'm actually starting it right now. <laughs> I'm not here to promote that, but it's going to actually be for moms of girls between the ages of five and eight when they start going to school, because that's prime time for mom to start focusing on herself personally developing herself. They're not yet old enough to participate in our retreats that we do twice a year, but they still want that, that mom camaraderie on how do I handle the difficult topics? Just like you, how do I talk about puberty in a healthy age appropriate way? So we're going to bring in different experts. We're going to do, it's going to be a monthly mom fidence mastermind. And mom fidence, I like it. That's going to be awesome. I like it. Okay. Well, I know that we were running out of time and I knew that you are a very busy woman. I just want to thank you so much. Like I, I could talk to you for hours and I'll probably have you back again because we need to continue this conversation. Uh, so I just want to thank you, Tracy, for being here today. And, uh, and where can people find you? What are you up to? I know that you said you have a retreat coming up. Is that correct? Yes. We have a retreat com coming up here in beautiful, beautiful Utah. It's November 1st and 2nd. And you can go to tracypeterson.com, Tracy with an I and Peterson's with an O-N, and you'll get all the information there. And right now we're doing an exclusive buy two, give two. So if you buy two tickets, you can give two to your mom or your sister and their daughter. And so you can kind of make a fun girls weekend about it. I love that. What an incredible gift. What an incredible gift that is to others, but also what an incredible gift you are to them. So thank you so much for being here today, Tracy. I honor you. I am so grateful for you. And uh, I, I want to have you back definitely very, very soon. Thank you. I love you. Thanks for being such a good mom too. You really are. Oh, too. we're working through it. We're all working through it, right? You never feel like you're in it. You never feel like you are at the time, but man, we'll, if we can bond together and have these more intentional conversations, uh, then, then we can really make a difference. And so thank you so much for being here. Miss Tracy Peterson, make sure that you check out her uh, retreat in Utah, if you're able to, I think that is just an incredible experience for you and your daughter. Uh, for another episode of Freedom Motivated, this is Christina Whiteley, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you for tuning in to another inspiring episode of Freedom Motivated with your host, me, Christina Whiteley. We hope that the stories we've shared today have sparked a fire within you and ignited your passion for living life on your terms. Remember, true freedom lies in the choices we make and the actions we take. So go out there and embrace your journey. Take the leap of faith, believe in yourself, and never settle for less than what you deserve. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to the Freedom Motivated Podcast and never miss out on our upcoming interviews with more incredible entrepreneurs and freedom leaders. Be bold, be brave, be disruptive. You are capable of things far beyond your wildest dreams if you just have the courage to go for it. Thank you for being a part of this incredible community. Until next time, may you always be driven by the desire for freedom and motivated to make your dreams a reality.